Alright guys, the nostalgia with this one is strong. Out of all the Battlefield games, there isn't another game that feels like I am being surrounded by a warm blanket of nostalgia. Now for many other people, their favourite Battlefield game would be 1942, 2142, probably the most popular one on this channel, Battlefield Vietnam, and also Bad Company 2, I hear that a lot of people love that. But for me, it is Battlefield 2. I can remember countless days sitting next to my dad on our shitty family computer and watching the intro video and getting excited and then I got to you know the main menu screen and well the first thing my dad would always do is change the controls because the freak that he is he can't use WASD he has to use the arrow keys and he'd also turn down the graphics for some reason but look we would pick a map and we'd wait five minutes for the game to sort out its shaders and I can hear the China theme which is my personal favorite in-game theme and we're off into the battlefield I mean I still have the original box and everything it's just incredible except I don't have a disk tray on my computer so I mean I had to go on some dodgy Russian website and then it turns out that there was a you know an actual decent way that wouldn't give me the virus which I'll link in the video description assuming that it doesn't get clapped by YouTube and you know also before I get into the video right for some reason the game just won't launch anymore so you might be seeing a mixture of like project reality I'll get into that in a minute and some battlefield 2 gameplay that I managed to get when the game Game was working. I, I turn my computer off, turn it back on, the game just, wa it just won't run. I, I don't know what the fuck happened. But look, what is it about this game that makes it great, other than the nostalgia? In my opinion, it just has to be that it is a down-to-earth shooter. And what I mean by that is, right, the map sizes are perfect. Offline with bots is 8v8, but with mods you can change that to 16v16 or even like, I think 128v128, assuming that your computer can support that. But look, you have an open world to explore varying in locations and biomes with many different modes of transport. Now going by my experience, there is no upgrades that you can get for like planes and helicopters that make them better than let's say a beginner using these things. It isn't overly realistic like some milsim like Armor 3, but the games aren't passed off as like fuck off fast like in Call of Duty and it just isn't like in your face like some action movie, you know? Sure if you like the Vietnam War era, which the majority of my audience prefers, then then yeah, Battlefield Vietnam is your guys' game. We, we, we've already established that. But for me growing up with the early days of YouTube, I'd always watch like top 10 best tanks or best attack helicopters, top 10 strongest armies. And I always wanted to use the Abrams Type 98 MI-28 Havoc. And this game delivered on all of it. And it looked spectacular back in what, 2006 when the game was released. But you know, of course we're gonna answer the question, how does it stack up in 2021? And to be brutal, honest, just like Battlefield 2142, the game did age pretty well, except it, it does lack in certain areas, if I'm being completely honest. Like, I mean, the maps, they, they look good, in my opinion. They look good. The guns, they look good. But when it came to the vehicles, it was, I feel like my image or my interpretation in my head, they looked much better. And also before playing this, I played 2142 and that game looks spectacular, right? And when I played Battlefield 2, it was like, it was a little bit of a downgrade because like my sort of mental image was that these were like some ultra HD realistic looking tank models. But when I actually saw them in game, you know, I was, I was like, oh, these, you know, they, these do look dated. And obviously, because the game's like, what, 14, 15 years old, of course it's going to be dated. But I mean, it's like so a little bit of a just a little bit, if I'm being completely honest, sort of revisiting this game. And of course, if you were to compare these graphics to like Bad Company 2, you, you can't even, right? Frostbite games, it just, it just shits on a lot of games. But the way the guns, you know, handle, they can can be a little bit difficult. I always use semi-auto because in full order you bloom way too much. And if we even compare the LMGs in Battlefield 5 to the ones in Battlefield 2, they are completely different. I should clarify that I mean most, but not all LMGs in Battlefield 5, because I know you got like the um I forgot I forgot the name of it, but you know the, the buzzsaw, I believe. I don't want to say the man's name, but you, you know the buzzsaw. Or was it the buzzsaw or the chainsaw? I can't remember, but you know what gun I'm talking about. That gun you have to mount it, otherwise you get no iron sight. You don't even get a crosshair, but but most of the guns, like the Lewis gun, the Bren gun, which is probably the most overpowered guns in Battlefield 5, last time I played it, that's all I'd use. If you compare these to like Battlefield 2, you get the M249 Saw, which is my favorite LMG in the game, because when I when I started playing Battlefield 2, Call of Duty 4 was just released, and we all know in that game, Sergeant Griggs, you know, Rip Sergeant Griggs, he'd use that same gun, and I saw this gun in Battlefield 2, and I'm like, hey, I want to use that. But the gun is so freaking hard to use, because going from Call of 
of Duty to Battlefield, especially back then, you'd expect, you know, I was expecting the guns to handle the same, but no, you couldn't run around or even ADS with this gun without it just spraying bullets where you don't want it to. Like, you could be point blank and you'd miss. That's why you need a literally prone and burst fire. Otherwise, you know, you're going to be pretty inaccurate. And this even applies to snipers, which aren't a one shot in this game. I mean, were they ever a one shot in Battlefield? But I mean, you really need a like prone, you know, you get the ghillie suit, you can literally hide in like some mountain area or some woodlands area and just snipe people from afar, which is good because unlike in newer Battlefield games, for some reason they decided to be like, hey, let's have like the lens flare. So like whenever you shoot, or even if you look at someone that's using a sniper, you know easily where they are. And not being a one shot <laughs> doesn't really help help. Oh, I mean, uh, last time I played Battlefield was on a console, so, you know, it was a lot harder to snipe, in my opinion. But, I mean, in this game, you don't have that feature. Snipers, I'd say, function as snipers. I mean, they're, they're weak as hell. Like, it, it, sometimes I felt like I was shooting little fucking airsoft BBs at enemies, but at least I wasn't easily identifiable. Except in the gameplay, I do get caught out, but, I mean, the fucking bots, of course, they know that they can track all my movements. The thing is, the bots are probably learning. They're analyzing my movements so they can beat me. But, look, I want to talk about vehicles, because because sure, playing against 8 bots can become stale after a while, especially considering there was a limited amount of maps that we got. And also, I should probably clarify this at the start of the video. The game that I got, or the disc version, was the unupdated game. So this was like the game that you got back in 2006, unupdated. Because I downloaded this uh, one version of the game, and it was like the recent up-to-date version 1.5, 1.6 or whatever. And I get a, a lot more stuff, a lot more maps compared to the vanilla game. So... That's probably why you're seeing all these extra maps. But look, you know, the tanks and APCs, all of them are they're modeled some better than others, but the Abrams looks good. The Type 90, 90? Type, I was going to say Type 99. Type 90, I believe the name of the Type 90, what am I on about? T90. It looks, yeah, it, it's a bit of a disappointment, if I'm being honest, because I was, my, my mental image was so completely different, especially when I play games like After Conflict and I see those, like, T84s or whatever the fucking tanks are called, I can't remember. Compare that to Battlefield 2, it really skewed my perception. But I mean, speaking of helicopters, my favorite thing was being on Operation Clean Sweep, and I'm like commander, and there's like a Black Hawk that spawns there, and I'm like, hey, I need a ride. And then they just say, no way, man. And I'm like, I am the fucking commander of the army. How dare you disobey me? But I mean, I swear the bots in this version are like different to the fucking disc version, because in the disc version, you get in a helicopter, you're a passenger, you know, you're on the minigun tearing ass, and then they just, everyone just jumps out of the helicopter, but in this one, the pilot didn't actually bail out, they just kept on requesting me to jump out, and I just kept on saying, no, get fucked, cunt, I am not jumping out of this helicopter, I want to stay on the minigun, and yeah, I, I do believe that they definitely did update the bots in, like, newer versions of Battlefield 2, and this was, like, a completely new experience to me, because all the other versions, or all the other times that I played Battlefield 2 was from the original disc, but I mean, my favorite helicopter had has to be the MI-28 Havoc. Just being a chopper gunner in that thing was insane. You could be a gunner and the thing is, right, the difference between the T Havoc and, you know, I think the Cobra and the, uh, I don't know, the fucking Chinese helicopter, it probably starts with the Z. I'm on the right path, I'm just not there yet. But I mean, the thing is, right, while the Havoc is heavier and bigger, the cannon is like a fucking, it's not even a machine gun, it's a literal cannon. It fires explosive rounds and it just obliterates anything that it touches. There's no wind-up time like on the Cobra it just instantly slaps ass and that was my favorite freaking helicopter to be a gunner of but I mean you know I want to talk about the maps yes after a while the maps that you are given can become stale well they did with the base game with the updated version of the game you do get a, a much wider variety and of course you can play the expansion packs like battlefield special forces and all that those are cool I highly recommend that you try them out they add some you know unique game mechanics like you can throw the fucking grapple thing and climb up mountains it was a little dodgy but it was still fun you know you can use the zip line, flash bangs. You can use a lot of cool stuff in the expansion packs. But back to the maps, right? You aren't completely limited to the maps that you get in the game. There is like hundreds, if not thousands. Okay, hundreds is like a complete underestimate. There are thousands of Battlefield mods. Maybe there are hundreds of map mods. And truth be told, I wanted to see if there was like a 
Melbourne mod of my like my own home city of Melbourne, right? And the thing is, I googled it and it actually came up. And for a second, like, there's no fucking way that someone made a mod of Melbourne. But turns out they just named it Melbourne. And I'm like, okay, maybe, maybe this is what Melbourne in Florida looks like. Am I on the right track? Is this what Florida looks like? But I mean, you know, it's not just map mods that you get. You get vehicles, weapons, scenario mods, such as a fucking zombie apocalypse. I remember watching this on YouTube as a kid and just being scared shitless. And my preferred or my favorite mod, the AIX 2.0 mod. That mod was so much fun, as in the MI-24 Hind, if you don't know, that's my favorite helicopter. Heaps! Heaps of fucking new maps. 64 players, or 64 player bot games. New factions, it, it was complete overhaul of the game. You can even get graphical mods, you can even get fucking Project Reality. I don't exactly know what that is, I didn't fucking do my research like a Muppet, but it, it's like, it's like Battlefield 2, except it's newer, I'd say, like it's fucking new animations, new graphics, new maps, yes you can play on some uh, <laughs> controversial maps that I don't want to bring up, but it, it's a good mod. If you haven't played Project Reality, it's free, fucking get it. Like, it's, it's fun, I highly recommend you just give it a shot, you don't lose anything. Now the game isn't without its faults, okay? I'm just gonna spitball a couple of problems that the game had, especially in its multiplayer experience. First thing that comes to mind is hearing enemies spotted every five minutes. I still am haunted by hearing that, and I even know, right, how to say it in like two other languages other than English. Another problem with online back in ye olden days was a thing that I had to censor. I, I can't say this word, but it was the unconsensual act that was performed on a team's base because there were no spawn protections or messages saying that you have to return to the combat area. You could literally spawn camp a, a team. As soon as they spawned or tried to move, you, you just fuck them in the rear end basically with helis, tanks. You can even steal their fucking planes and helicopters. You can still do that in newer Battlefield games. It's just so much harder. Because I remember in Battlefield 3, I just jump out of my plane and land on the American aircraft carrier and just steal their planes. It, it was funny as shit shit, but in this game, you could literally just sneak around back and just steal the shit, spawn camp them, and it was ridiculous. And there was also the grenade spam. You think in Rising Storm 2 Vietnam that getting two grenades is a lot? No, I just think you get like, what, three, four grenades in Battlefield 2? You can just literally pepper a whole fucking area, like an automatic grenade cannon launcher device thingy. I don't know where I'm going with that. But those are just a couple of problems just like right off the top of my head that people had with the game. There was probably a lot more that I missed. Now the burning question I know a lot of you are dying to have answered, can you still play multiplayer of this game? And to be honest, the last time I played this game, was multiplayer was in 2017, and there, there was like fully populated servers. Yes, I got horrible ping, but I mean, you know, I just dealt with it. For the majority of my audience, the ping won't be an issue since the servers are in the US and Europe, but you can download like Battlefield 2 Hub, and I'm probably gonna leave a link to this other website where you can, you know, get the game. From the looks of it, they are, you know, even active on Twitter, so this isn't something that has been abandoned. People still care and give a shit about this game. But I mean, at the time of writing this script, I was approached by a person, and I also even got an email saying that there are Battlefield Vietnam and Battlefield 20... Oh, I can't believe I read that wrong. Battlefield 1942, I have dyslexia. There are actual servers that are populated, and I will be making a gameplay video with or without, maybe, just something for people who watch the end of the video to get excited about. There might be a chance of a face cam video with or without a disguise. I haven't decided on that yet, so I do stick around for that. But uh, yeah, Battlefield 2 servers populated. People still play this game. It's it's ridiculous. The game is so old. Oh, not so old, but yeah, it's, it's an old game. And you still have a dedicated fan base of people trying to keep the game alive. What do you, what, what do you, what do you have to say about that? It's genuinely a great game if people still give a shit about it. And I, this was my childhood. This game was my childhood. But anyways, I'm going to end today's video there. I hope you guys did enjoy it, because if you did, please do consider leaving a like, subscribing, and sharing the video too with your friends. Anyways, my name is Tantu, and I will catch you guys in the next video. Peace.